Well, the topic of today's video is about the explosion of the walleye fishing on Lake Erie. It's insane. It's, it's just crazy. So I'm going to ask a bunch of questions. And folks, I want you to like and subscribe if you haven't done that right here. And if we, as we go through this, if I haven't asked him a question that you're wondering about, please put it in the comments down below. I will contact Jason, ask him, and get back to you because it's super, super interesting. You bet. It really yeah. is. Jason, I have been fishing Lake Erie all my life. I've been walleye fishing since I was a kid and stuff, but it is outstanding. It's crazy. I was running trips this year where I was limiting out with 18 to 24 fish within an hour or two. It's just crazy. What has caused this explosion of fish? Well, it is crazy, and people are having a great time out there. What causes good walleye fishing is consistent recruitment over time. And when, what I mean by recruitment, some people call it hatching success. Right. So little walleye moving into the population over time. And we are just in a period of unprecedented recruitment over the last decade. And that slowly building up and producing some of the amazing fishing we have now. And it's not just local recruitment. As your serious walleye anglers will know, what happens in the West Basin of Lake Erie is very important to our right, fishing right, here in New York. Right, yeah. So it's consistent recruitment here and in the West that's producing that amazing fishing. Yeah, saw. we have a video of the migration of what yeah. it looks like when uh, all that migration from the west to the east because that's part of the other question is you know fishing here is is, is okay in the spring it's good but it doesn't really explode until maybe like mid-july late july and then it, it's like outstanding and here it is we're doing this interview maybe mid-october and it's still good out here yeah because the water temperature is still warm so one of the things that's happened recently is that our east basin population has has really increased yeah. as we've gotten this uh, good recruitment. In the past, we were really reliant on that Western Basin migration to come across. Right. And it's really good that we have some some local recruitment going on because as you get closer to Buffalo, the influence of those migrants really peters out. Most of the fish people are catching close to Buffalo are our own fish that are right. that are hatched here. Yep. It's about 50-50 right now. We oh, use, wow. Yeah, it's about 50-50. That's unbelievable. In New York I didn't think it was even close to that. Um, when we estimated that years ago before this explosion of recruitment, it was more like 10 or 20 percent our fish. Right. And so we have, you know, some resiliency because of our own fish. I put down in my notes here, what's the guesstimation of the population of walleye in Lake Erie? I hear 100 million. I hear all kinds of numbers. It, and it was 100 million adults um, several years ago. Now it's more around 72 million. Yeah. And that estimate changes every year as walleye die or are caught or right. new walleye come into the sure. population. Yeah. So it's about 72 million. That does not include our East Basin population. That's just that huge population of West Basin oh, wow. fish. Our East Basin population is much smaller. Right. They don't tend to move around too much. Right, right. Um, we think they're in the range of one to two million. Nice. Yeah. Do you expect this, you know, to last for a long time? We do. Uh, so walleye are a pretty long-lived fish. Yeah. A lot of people don't have a good sense of that, but just to give you an example, the 2003 year class was was really big, one of the biggest ever. Sure. And people are still catching those yeah, fish. That's what I heard. So old. what are they, 21, yeah. 21 years old? Yeah, unbelievable. Um, and so the fact that we're having these year classes just stacked up on each other right. means those are going to pay dividends for our anglers for at least the next decade. That's awesome. And I can't say it's going to be off the charts record-breaking fishing because you can't have records every year but it's going to be really solid for the next decade. That's yeah. great. One of the questions I had was, why is it bite great in the eastern end all year round? Or why isn't it great yeah. because of that migration? But I'll make a point that I have areas of shallow water, I mean, really shallow, like 8, 10 feet of water. Yeah. And I catch them year round in those areas, but I'm catching more and more in up to that that. 35, 40 foot break where we didn't used to catch them there. Now they're actually relating to structure. They're relating to drop offs and humps and whatnot. I kind of attribute it to the uh, population of the goby that mm -hmm. they're probably there eating goby. What do you say about that? Well, they're definitely eating goby. Everything in Lake Erie is eating goby, <laughs> right? Um, so diet of walleye, what we found over the years is they, they will concentrate on smelt if they can, Okay. Um, but we've been having a reduced smelt population and then they flip flop back and forth to goby or smelt depending on what's available. They'll eat other things too, but uh, it's really goby and smelt dominated. In the past several years, it's been more goby. Wow. What do you think packs on the weight more, goby or smelt? 
Really? I don't I don't think it matters because again when we do these uh, when we do these diets it's a, just a snapshot in time. Okay. So we're doing them in August. Right. That doesn't mean they're not switching to something else, gizzard shad at yeah. another time of the year. And so I, I think go beard and smelt are both a, a pretty good food source. And the reason why I ask that is because as a bass fisherman, the smallmouth got huge. I mean, on you know, we, we, yeah. on gobies because yeah. we caught one tied to state record in eight four. We caught that in. 2017, there's a picture of a Tommy Quincy with it. When you catch one, they're puking up three or four of them. Yeah. So, and, and we've seen that with the walleye, too. We get them in the boat, and up comes a bunch and of gobies. bass are made to eat gobies. I, <laughs> I mean, right. they have yeah. that mouth. They can yeah. suck them yeah. out of the yeah. rocks. And, yeah. and uh, So I don't think they're expending too much energy to eat goby bass. So it's been amazing for bass growth in Lake Erie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, here's kind of a, a question. As a kid, growing up uh, on Lake Erie, I'm 72, so I've seen it all. I've seen the lake go from death to this unbelievable population. Yeah. Blue pike was the big thing. I remember yeah. my dad bringing bushel baskets of small looking walleye. And as a little kid, I used to love to rub the eyeball because they had those big eyes <laughs> on them and stuff. And they always talk about blue pike. Was blue pike a real thing or was it a genetic difference in a walleye or what was it? So let me preface this response with, I'm not a geneticist, right? right? Okay, yeah. So, but uh, I was just looking at a paper the other day um, they're still arguing over whether blue pike oh, yeah. was a real oh, yeah. thing yeah. or whether they're <laughs> yeah. not. But I, I can say, you know, people are catching walleye with that blue slime phase. Uh, yeah, I, I'm catching them. Um, like and a yellow perch as well, yep. occasionally. Every time we test one of those, it groups with our walleye. modern walleye, right. not with the old samples. Of and some of our old, we have old scale samples. And years ago when they tested them, no, they're blue pike. And now they're saying, well, they're closer to walleye. Yeah. So again, the genetics techniques improve so much over the years and i think the answer will continue to to shift as those genetic techniques improve but again i'm not a geneticist how deep into the into the lake are you guys you know catching and whatever you know i see argo out there running the nets and i used to do that with them i'd go out when, when i had the tv show and they would sample stuff i used i mean they're catching them in a hundred plus catching feet walleye right yeah there. yeah yeah um walleye are everywhere yeah. you know they when we do our lake trout survey we go below yeah. the thermocline yep. quite deep. Yep. There are walleye down there. Not as many, right. but they definitely occupy that cold water habitat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there are some big lake trout in Lake Erie. I know the state record was broken here. Again, when I had the TV show, we used to go with guys and they'd go out there and I'd go, what are you fishing for lake trout for? He goes, they're just <laughs> unmolested. And we would catch 20 pounders and they'd go, that's a small one. Yeah. <laughs> they're just dying of old age out there. I'm glad you mentioned that because I always want to promote that lake trout fishery. Oh, it's phenomenal. It is amazing and no one's really paying attention it to is, it. It is so, unbelievable. If you want to un catch big lake trout, come to, come come to, to lake, lake Erie. Erie. That's yeah. for yeah. sure. 50 fish per person in New York State for perch. Mm -hmm. uh, I only ran one perch trip last year, but... We, we had 200, there was four people fishing, and they were they were huge. huge. They were yeah. absolutely yeah. Mo monsters. We could barely carry the bag. But uh, the perch population, what's with that? That's been phenomenal. Believe it or not, right now we're about average. Wow. Back in uh, 2014, we were we were off the charts, but we have the biggest perch in the lake. If, you wanna, if you're fishing for meat, this is where you should go right. in Lake Erie. Yeah. So what, what makes good perch fishing? They're not as long-lived as walleye, right. and so... Typically, we want fish in three, four, five, and six age classes. That's what makes good perch fishing out here in the East Basin. Okay. Right now, we have uh, three, four, and five. I believe I made a note, so I don't, uh, so I don't get it wrong here. Sure. Yeah, three, four, and five this year. Next year, we have another year class coming in, so it will be three, four, five, and six. So it should be really good next year as well. Nice. Yeah. And if you're a yeah. if you're a fish eater. And you love walleye. Perch taste even better. I oh, mean, yeah. there's something about a perch that's got a little sweet to it, taste to it, or whatever. They're just phenomenal yeah. fish to eat. But uh, I guess there's a couple other things that aren't related to walleye that we yeah. could, we could Absolutely. mention uh, that are kind of exciting. We talked about lake trout. Um, we've for we've been trying to restore lake trout in Lake Erie for 60 years. Right. And uh, for the first time in 60 years, we were able to document natural reproduction in lake trout oh, right great. over by Barcelona. So that was really exciting, and the crew here has been working really hard on that. And then um, next year, we have something pretty exciting. We're uh, putting Cisco back into the lake. Oh, we wow. We have our first stock, major stocking of Cisco um, in Lake Erie. It's going to start uh, in the spring next year. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, the Federal Hatchery in Allegheny is raising it. Oh, that's raising great. Cisco for us. So. And, and will, will the walleye feed on the Cisco? Well, I, they will. I, I don't want them to, right. but, they, but they will. They will, yeah. 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 They, they will, for sure. Cisco used to be the main... 
sure. forage fish out here. And so I'm sure that they'll be eaten by lake trout and walleye. Oh, and everything yeah. else. You had something on here about growth. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the growth rate. That's sure. really interesting because, uh, it, and, and I'll just preface that, we start at the beginning of the year, you catch 14 and a half. Yeah. And then by the end of the summer, they're 15 and a half or whatever it is. And I'm sure that's the same group of fish that have grown. Those are two-year-olds. Two-year-olds. Yeah, okay. those are all two-year-olds in that just below legal. And then by the end of the summer, they're, they're legal. Right. And uh, if you recall, several years ago, there was real concern about skinny fish. Right. Remember that? Yeah. Um, and that was a real thing. I mean, we tested those fish. They were in poor condition. And that was when that first pulse of recruitment came through and all of a sudden the population increased to, you know, a hundred, hundred million. Yeah. Those were in the same years that set records for angling success. That was 18 and 19. Um, and now I guess I should back up. There's a difference between growth and condition. You can have a slow growing fish that's in really good shape and you can have a fast growing fish that's in, in poor shape. Okay. So right now we're about average for our fish condition, but the growth has definitely slowed. I mean, when we had a, a lower walleye population, there's just more resources to go around. Sure. So yeah. by definition, that growth is going to slow. So if you've noticed who's been winning tournaments lately, it hasn't necessarily been a 12 pound fish that's won a tournament. Right. It can be a 10 pound fish now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we still have really good growth, but it, it has slowed yeah, down. Yeah, you don't hear yeah. too many real, real big yeah. ones. That, yeah, that's yeah. that's something else too. Lake Erie, we used to hear that when it froze solid, that there was a better breeding for walleye. The last two years, we have not had any ice on Lake Erie to speak of. I mean, there might have been some shoreline ice, but does we, that help? We haven't had any real ice to speak of since 2014. Yeah, you really. Know, yeah, um, yeah. True then, you know, things changed that you needed strong ice cover to get a good walleye year right. class. That is obviously not the case anymore because right, we've right. been pulling off good year classes one after the other yeah. with virtually no ice cover. Yeah. Um, and so that's, it's not true anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that clears up another yeah. rumor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good yeah. stuff. I think you answered a lot of questions. I appreciate it, folks. Again, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments there. I'll reach out to Jason or somebody else here at the DEC. Anyway, appreciate you watching. Yeah. Thank you for being on. I appreciate My pleasure. it. Thanks, folks.